Order. At the Maungai. Kiritapu Allen. ホノリケテトイロトイテナイファリオテパリマタ。モイテナユリオテピリダカウ、ホンガティランギニュイオンガイテランギオトイファレトウ。マイガオワコオテタキテムマタトウタイニュイ。キアコトウ、オクナイラン
uh, a son of a solo mother who raised four boys in Gore to be resilient, hardworking and decent men. Her ancestors arrived here, arrived here aboard the 1848 vessel, the Blunder, landing in Port Chalmers from Scotland. <laughs> my father's father, the son of migrants from Aberdeen that came via Sri Lanka, where they were the owners of a tea plantation. My mother's father, a fisherman and World War II veteran. Her mother, a Piridako princess who was raised in the centre of our universe, Te Puna. And I just briefly want to acknowledge the member, Todd Muller, who is the first member of this house to be from that centre of the universe, and I'm proud to join him as the second, sir. Sir, I have the honour of carrying my grandmother's name, Kiritapu. Now, my nana spoke only te reo uh, at, uh, in the home until the age of five when she entered into the native school system. Sir, on her first day at that school, her name was changed to Kitty, a name that she would carry for the rest of her life. And she was strapped for speaking te reo Māori. Whatever the intention, sir, it was nevertheless the effect that my nana's cultural identity was whipped out of her at that school. And so too, some might say, was her voice. So, Nena, I stand here in this house to honour your name, to give voice to the voiceless who, for whatever their circumstances, cannot speak for themselves. Sir, growing up, central government politics wasn't really a part of our daily discourse, but standing up for what was right and honourable was of absolute fundamental importance. Now, I swear I didn't swap notes with my colleague here, Willow Jean, but this was truly epitomised by my mother, Gail. During my formative years, I saw my mother lead a walkout from our community, a community that we loved and that we cherished, but nevertheless whose leadership she perceived uh, to be abusing its power. It was a stance that took courage and the support of my dad. Mum, after standing up for what you believed in, in the face of all adversity, I thank you for giving me, in turn, the courage to stand up for what I believe in. Sure. Sir, I am an extraordinarily proud New Zealander. <laughs> now, we come from a country that punches above its weight. A country that in 1893, in a movement led by Mere Pekka Mangakahia and Kate Shepherd, uh, became the first country to give women the right to vote. Sir, a country that stood for being clean and green by taking a nuclear-free stance when it was politically unpalatable. Sir, a country that has been bold enough to face its past and embark on a process of reconciliation of our history by in part trying to establish the Waitangi Tribunal and engaging in the treaty settlement process. A country that is the home of Weta Workshops, Flight of the Concords, Lord, and my cousin by dint of marriage, uh, the director of Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, in 2016, I was fortunate enough to marry my best friend because this parliament was one of the first in the world to recognise marriage equality. I am indebted to the members of this House from both sides, and particularly Louisa Wall and the Honourable Grant Robertson for championing something so simple as the right to, love the, uh, to marry the person you love. Sir, we are a small but mighty nation. <laughs> However, despite our proud history, there is still an incredible amount of work to be done. So during the course of the campaign and indeed throughout my electorate, the East Coast, I meet with people that share their stories. In the words of one of my constituents, there is ugliness in the shadows if you take the time to look. And sir, indeed I look. I saw the family of seven living out of their cars at the beach in Thornton. I saw the working age man in a portiki who waited four years for a heart operation. 
Sir, I saw the nine Gisborne families who lost loved ones in the period of just a few weeks to suicide. I saw the kids who were left parentless by their mums and their dads who were lost in the irrationality that is P. I saw the strain on the face of the full-time working mum and kawero who can't afford the gas to get the kids to school, to sport, to participate. Sir, and I saw the forestry worker from Wadua Tōria who passed away in a workplace accident exactly one year to the day from his first cousin. Sir, there is ugliness that lurks in the shadows, but sadly, this is not unique to the East Coast. They say that it is easier to invest in building strong children than it is to fix broken men and women. Sir, I am committed to giving my all in this government that invests in ensuring that our kids reach their true potential. Now, sir, I'm not one of those people that thinks that government has the answers to everything or can do everything. But I do believe that the role of the government is to work collaboratively with communities that we serve to enable the many and not just the few to reach their full potential. Now, sir, the law, it's a funny thing. Although we don't actively think about it when we go about our day-to-day -day lives, the law sets out the parameters and rules by which we collectively live. The law touches many aspects of our lives, from telling us to stop at a stop sign to influencing the way in which our economy performs. So the impact of the written word of law is pervasive and deeply felt when it is working well. But, sir, it is much more so when it is not. As a lawyer, I learned to operate within the confines of the existing words of the law. But as a member of this House, we are privileged to influence and determine the content. And, sir, this is not a privilege I take either lightly or for granted. I'm filled with genuine hope entering to this House as part of the sixth Labour-led government, and particularly under the leadership of Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern. Prime Minister Ardern has compassion and empathy and connection to the people that we seek to serve, and under her leadership, and indeed the leadership of our executive, I feel like we are on the precipice of true change. So recently I met a young man from Taniatua who had just finished high school, and he came up to me on the street and said, Oi, kiri tapu, if I vote for you, will you help fellas like me get a job? Now this is the kid, this is the type of kid who is all too easily written off as being a future burden on the system and not an asset to invest in. I am proud to be a part of a government that will give kids like this and indeed, really, kids like me, a shot. And we know that to do this, we must do the basics and do those basics right. By stimulating our economy, and in particular our regional economies, uh, by focusing on our core industries and nurturing community buy-in to our local workforce and ensuring that the infrastructure is there to support such growth. And, sir, while it's positive, I'm not just talking about the growth of the shareholders' bottom line, sir. I'm talking about the successful growth of people in meaningful jobs and industries and community that works together for the benefit of all. Now, sir, there are many people on my journey that have helped me to reach my potential. Uh, first, I want to acknowledge my constituents of the East Coast and in particular to my members who worked doggedly uh, for nine months on our campaign for change. Uh, you all know who you are, and I am deeply indebted to you all. In particular, to my campaign chair, campaign mentors, uh, Sir Michael Cullen and Lady Anne Collins sitting here in this gallery today. Uh, I embark on my journey in this house and I am indebted to both of you for the wisdom, patience and guidance 
that you have graciously bestowed upon me. Uh, to my mum, my dad, my aunties, my uncles, my brothers, my sisters, my cousins, and to, you know, a few of you fellas up there. Uh, thank you all for grounding me, uh, holding me, and loving me, because we are but a sum of each other. Uh, finally, uh, Kaya Koe Te Tau, who's probably had to step out with our baby. There. Somewhere, there she is. Uh, Natalie, for the love, the guidance, wisdom, patience, and uh, everything else that you give to me in our whanau. Uh, ka nui te mihi aroha ki um, And I know I owe you for this one, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sir, I commence my remarks in this house today referring to my 17-year-old self uh, stumbling across this parliament. On that same day, sir, that young girl penned a short spoken word piece outside on this lawn. Uh, that seems appropriate as I stand in this house. We are raising a nation of beautiful babies. This is our generation where we lift our heads high. Be gone the days of our forebearers where they were taught to be shy. Because this land, yes, Aotearoa, it is our promise, and that is for sure. Being strong in our identities, fostering visions of equality, strong people and strong communities. Yeah. <laughs> Sir, we named our daughter Hiwe Itirangi. Hiwe Itirangi is one of the nine stars of Matariki and it is the star that we cast forth our dreams, hopes and aspirations for the crop of the year ahead. My prayer is that the work I do in this house, alongside my colleagues, lays the seed that seed so that my daughter and indeed all ch children in this nation will fulfill the dreams and aspirations of our forebearers for a fairer, more equitable Aotearoa New Zealand. The House stands adjourned until 2pm on Tuesday the 14th of November 2017.